Welcome to this fifth toolbox talk that examines the standard elements of your company's safety management system. This month we are examining safe working procedures. As you will recall, the purpose of these toolbox talks is so that you can impart vital safety management information to your direct reports and, at the same time, provide and or update your own knowledge and understanding of the regulatory safety requirements for all aspects of safety management in your own role. You will have received a Toolbox Talk poster and a script to direct and guide this Toolbox Talk. This video is to provide you with further information so that you can direct the talk with confidence of the subject and be able to answer any specific questions that your audience may have. Safe working procedures appear after the risk assessment section within our safety management system. Ideally, but not always, the need for a safe working procedure is directed by a risk assessment. So what is a safe working procedure? Or well, to put it in simple terms, it is a written risk control. We looked at risk controls in the last toolbox talk that covered risk assessments. Risk controls are required where the level of risk from a workplace hazard is unacceptable. Risk controls can take the form of elimination, isolation, or control of the hazards and associated risks. Such hazards can come from machinery, for example, forklift trucks, or activities in the workplace, like opening curtain-sided trailers. The UK's health and safety law requires all employers to reduce workplace risks to ensure that they maintain a safe workplace. This requires them to control the workplace hazards and risks so far as is reasonably practicable to do so. Standard risk controls may not be enough to reduce the risk to employees to an acceptable level. Therefore, a safe working procedure could be written to direct the safest way to do the activity each and every time. We are all used to using instruction manuals. Every new piece of equipment comes with them and we always religiously read them, don't we? And there are the activities that we already know how to do, so we don't need instruction in them either, do we? Unfortunately, our experiences show that either many employees fail to bother to read instruction manuals or that their knowledge of the activities that they should know how to perform lacks essential steps that guarantees their safety. In a workplace setting, it's important to direct the required work and risk control method so that everyone who performs that activity does it correctly and in a consistently correct manner every time. Therefore, we will require safe working procedures as a risk control. This safe working procedure will be sufficiently detailed to ensure safety is maintained when a hazardous activity is being performed by any person carrying out that activity. As an employer, we have to insist that despite the way that our employees choose to do their own activities in a social setting, that they read, study, know and apply the specifics of the safe working procedure in the logical step-by-step -step arrangement during the activity. We never know when the hazard is going to bite back, so therefore we must ensure that we give it very little opportunity to do so. The risk is increased even more when we are required to conduct new activities with new equipment or where the standard type of activity changes to introduce new and uncontrolled hazards. Within the safety management system, there are numerous safe working procedures that cover the foreseeable hazards and the risk from their activities. There will be occasions where no safe working procedure exists. What do we do then? We do as the law requires. We use our pooled knowledge and experience to devise a safe working procedure there and then and communicate it out to the employees who could be harmed so that we ensure that the workplace remains safe to work in. Obviously, if we fail to plan or put inadequate resources into the task, then we are creating an unacceptable level of risk that cannot be controlled by standard arrangements. Nearly all of our predictable and foreseeable workplace activities have safe working procedures in place to direct and guide the persons at risk to perform the activity safely. All you have to do as a manager is make sure that they know the safe working procedures and can readily apply them. Therefore, you inform, communicate, supervise and check to make sure that they are being followed and applied. After all, as a manager, you want to protect your most valuable assets, don't you? As usual, we end this toolbox talk with a reference to the company's safety objectives. Safe working procedures are detailed in both the last arrow box of the purple and blue lines. The purple line references the need for you as a manager to check that workplace risk controls are in place, whereas the blue line references the need to communicate the safe working procedures. Every workplace injury is an example of workers either failing to use a safe working procedure or in identifying the need for a defined safe working procedure to be devised and communicated. Where your department or theatre of operation acquires new equipment or applies new procedures, 
speak to the safety team first to get assistance and guidance on determining the best risk controls and how to communicate and document them within the company safety management system. Thanks for watching this Safety Management System Toolbox Talk. Should you require any further information, contact Dan Lee on the details shown on the screen. Thanks again for watching. Next month we'll look at local procedures.